Hello, I'm Roger Brinker, a master guide with the Barnstone Studios, and I'm here with my student, and she's completed her homework for uh, week one of Myron Barnstone's Drawing One Lessons and years ago. Uh, when I was teaching the youth classes at the Barnstone Studios. Uh, with my students, I did a project where I had them design their own bottle. So what you're looking at here is a student designed bottle, but the starting point was they selected a bottle that they liked the way that the bottle top was constructed. So on the right, you can see the larger uh, drawing, which is a sort of an analytical drawing of a bottle top that they selected. But the challenge after that was to design the rest of the bottle that it would look like it belongs all together as a completely unified creature. And uh, the thing I like to talk about with a bottle is what makes a bottle look unified? Well, we think of bottles as being like people. Um, we personify them. We even use the same language to describe them. We talk about the head of the bottle and the neck and shoulder and body. So we're naming the parts of the bottle after ourselves. So we're kind of thinking of them like people. So with that in mind, their challenge was uh, take the proportions from the top, take the shapes from the top and recombine them and change the scale and build a bottle that looks like it all belongs together. So that's what that uh, bottle on the left is. And then what we did from there is we took the final bottle design and we then created a, a plaster lathe, which is a turning instrument. It was actually something that the Greeks used uh, to design bottles with. And so with that lathe, we actually made plaster dummies for, for a bottle. And then with some of the bottles, we actually made a two-piece mold and we cast it. So what you see on the right is an actual vessel that was cast in plaster and fired. So it, it's a vessel that would hold water and it was all designed by this student. So you're seeing the, the projection from, um, from design on paper and its starting point to the end product. So in my view, that's a wonderfully unified bottle because all the parts belong together. The shapes that were selected were based on a select few that were in one area and then all of the things relate to each other. So now we're looking back to your bottle trio again. So here are the three that you've selected. And so um, there are three different heights, but what I'm gonna suggest to you is if we look at a diagonal running from the highest to the lowest, you can see that the middle bottle looks like it's a little bit on the short side. It feels as though it wants to be a little bit taller so that it would kind of occupy a stronger center position in the whole group. Does that seem to be the case to you when you look at that? Yes, yeah, definitely, okay. I agree. Right, so, so in this case, if we're just using a measure of, of height, it seems like the middle bottle could stand to be just ever so slightly taller, okay? Um, so years ago at the Barnstone Studios, when, uh, when students got their first week's lesson, they went home, they found three bottles, and Myron didn't tell them what to find. They just collected whatever bottles they, they found and they did the lesson. When they brought them in on the second week, the first part of the critique was to say why some bottles worked and others didn't work. So he talked about what makes a unified trio. So, um, so in this case, Myron probably would have criticized the center bottle because it seemed to be a little bit small in height compared with the others. So another way we can look at this is width. So if we look at the width of the, the wine bottle on the left and the Perrier on the right, they're similar in width. And then once again, the bottle in the center seems to be a good deal thinner than the others. So in terms of a trio, that center bottle is giving us problems again, because it's kind of like if we look at it, sort of the Goldilocks principle, and we have the papa bear, mama bear, baby bear, the mama bear looks a little bit tiny in, in proportion to the others. So it's a little bit lacking there. Does that seem to be the case? Yes, okay. Yeah. I agree. So. <laughs> So jumping to the next thing, what else is going on in the bottle? Well, bottles are collections of simple, basic geometric shapes. So uh, we learned from Myron that uh, the circle, triangle, and rectangle are the, the primary basic shapes. 
And so if we just look at the circle as a, as a unit, we can see all three of the bottles have a circle in the center. Okay, and a variation on that is that the one on the right actually has two circles in it. So and we'll look at that a little closer as we go because I noticed in your, in your homework, you didn't quite see that. And we can talk about how and why that affects the shape. It, it's a subtlety, okay? So in this case, the Perrier is maybe a little bit of an outlier because it's slightly different from the other two, but all three are using that shape repeatedly in the, in the body. Hi, I'm Kat Barnstone Saffron and the director of Barnstone Studios. Myron Barnstone was my father, an international artist and an accomplished teacher. In 1979, he opened up the Barnstone Studios in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and eventually it grew to a size that we had to move to Copley, PA for 10,000 square feet. 10,000 square feet of students working hard, of Myron work, walking from student to student, making sure they understood the nuances. Myron would have three or four or five different levels of student in one class. And each time he got to talk to them, it was on their level. And that's what we're working with with our Master Guide series. So today you saw a clip of our Master Guide, Roger Brinker, working with the more advanced students. This is part of what Myron would have done. He would have made sure to spend time with each person where they were. We are providing for you that opportunity to watch these videos that will teach you what you might find missing simply taking the using the workbook and taking the class. So we ask if you would like the full lecture to join us on Patreon. It would be $25 a month and you will have access to a full catalog. Major artists like Da Vinci had patrons. Patreon is giving you an opportunity to help be our patron. We really appreciate all your participation and enjoy the rest of the videos. As Myron would always say, be well.